Okay, well then, then come a little bit more. A little more. That should do it. I'm guessing it's not too much of a dog, but you know what? This is where we're shooting the first scene. We have a nice bed here. And then we have Aaron with a camera. What up? This is not what you think, but we'll get into details on what we'll be filming in here. So I'm gonna get the conversation going. <clears throat> All right. So we're gonna get the conversation going on discussing what we have going on in here. So, Walk us through this first scene and what you want to do for lighting. Yeah, so we're kind of, the goal is like an evening, moody light, um, purely motivated by these lamps here. Okay. Um, I played with the idea of like a uh, sodium vapor light coming through, but I think we decided daytime, probably yeah. not going to be It easy. is the morning. This is the first shot <laughs> of the day. We are on the shadow side of the house. The windows are facing the west. Sun comes up in the east. So we, it is a little bit darker than if it was blasting full sun, but we do still have to deal with that. Um, I want to introduce everyone to our big crew today. I know this is something that everyone wants to see. So today we have just us two. <laughs> so this is a classic one-man band plus one. Aaron hired me out. I brought the van. Uh, I guess it's one-man band plus a van. I guess it's is what it comes lighting to. And, and cameras kind yeah. of what we're working with. So we're just going to kind of be doing all the roles together, helping each other out. He's going to help do heavy lifting with the genie when we need it. And then camera, I'll assist as much as I can as well. But yeah, we're doing this scene before lunch and uh, different, different angles, different shots. And then we're going to move on to another three parts of the house where there's smaller scenes. They're not going to be as technical to set up. So we're going to motivate it. We're going to darken this space up and make it look like it's nighttime with a nice warm glow from our tungsten lights, right? Yep. Yeah. All right. Pretty much exactly it. We'll awesome. kind of stay on this side of filming okay. to use, you know, shadow side because it's cinematic. Cool. We just connected our Hollyland Pyro S. It's shooting the signal from the camera. We are not recording in the camera, but what it will give us the ability to do is record directly to our sumo and you can see it's recording now so you can actually see how everything changes as we light the scene and you'll be able to follow along and see how things kind of come to be so first thing right off the bat is we're probably going to have to adjust those bulbs bulbs and block as much light as we can i guess yep. right yeah so we'll see uh i don't know if we change the exposure for those bulbs uh adjust for that or if we're able to change these guys out. Oh, we should be able to change them out. Just normal. Oh, cool. They just fall right on the bulbs. So probably put some aperture bulbs in here. Wonderful. Okay. Uh, only only issue with a lot of those bulbs is they don't have a good downward shoot mm. because it's a half bulb. It'll light up but not go down. What? So is there we'll, a way to reflect it back down or? It's, not easy. It, it's not easy and okay. it's noticeable. So that's something to think about. So what we may do is adjust the exposure for these and then everything else we could adjust after that okay so i think uh and these give off somewhat of a warm glow so yeah. we could adjust for that okay so i think that's the route we go cool make those adjustments so maybe nd down yeah i would go ahead or and bring honestly, it down i'm gonna well we'll still need to end what, what's the best iso on this guy 
for dark scenes, like 400. 400? Yeah, because it's raw, so you're basically just, it's like shooting in Cine EI or whatever. Okay, and what uh, f-stop are we at right now? 2.8, and, and I, we will go shallow for like... Um, close-ups. Like 1.4 or 2 for close-ups, yeah. Don't let that happen. Don't get on the shot. <laughs> this is why we don't let camera touch stuff. You see his <laughs> fell and mine is still there. It's really a fluke. important. And, and actually, technically, I think that's uh, art department. Or, um, yeah. yeah, stay in your lane. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, let's see what happens. This is the ND we had. We have a lot more sun now, but it's still pretty dark in there. And this is Aaron peeling it all off. So I think we have three layers here, two layers. Yes, it's very hot. Yeah. That's so, fine, dude. This is your holding the camera. Huh? <laughs> so this is what we blocked out the window with. We didn't have the ability to shoot this scene at night like we wanted to, so we had to create a night look. I opted for using Indie Gels. They're very similar to Window Tint, and I used multiple layers. I had some scraps laying around, and it was just enough to cover that lower portion of the window, which will be visible in the opening shot of this scene. So I wanted to make sure we had a good look going on. I didn't feel that gelling it blue or doing something like that was going to give us a look that we wanted. And you can see how crucial that gel is compared to the regular window outside that's very, very bright. You can see the contrasting difference. One of the key players on this shoot was actually Taquito. I don't know if I've ever introduced Taquito to you guys, but this is Taquito the cat. Helped us out a lot. We actually had to make sure that the cat didn't escape while shooting. Other elements for this shoot after we did the indie filters were just a few lights. We left those two lights above the bed. They were actually going to carry as practicals in the scene. Simple and efficient setups were crucial for this shoot. It was Aaron and I setting up all the lighting and grip so we couldn't go overboard or go too crazy with things. With the practicals in play on this one, we had the lights at a very, very minimal output, some of them at 1% to make things happen. For the first shot, we used an Amaran T2C with a 45 degree grid to control a little bit of our spill. It's actually attached to our T-bar setup where we blocked out the window. For the first shot, we are coming in from the left side on a Dana dolly. So this is kind of keying from the far side and giving us a nice little glow on the subject. You can see this is the window blocked out. We blocked out as much as we could. Could I have done a better job? Give me a little more time and it wouldn't have been an issue, but we didn't have any spill, so it didn't cause any problems in the frames. And you can see how bright it is outside, even with the ND gels applied. We used a Amaran T4C to give us kind of room levels, and that's over there on the left, just bouncing into the wall. And that's all the lighting we have. We have our practicals, our T2C as a key, our T4C bouncing off the wall. And this is what it looks like as I filter through those lights, turning them on and off, the T2C and the T4C. So you could go for a very, very moody look with a silhouette with just a nice little light on the front or you could opt for all the lights on like we did and this is what the final frame looked like this is just a quick LUT applied to the footage a screen grab it has not been fully graded but i wanted to get this out to you guys and show you what it looks like and this is the atomos false color LUT applied to the footage so you could see how the light is landing on the subject now we're on to the next shot. We changed things up a little. These are gonna be more detailed and closer up. So we do change up the lighting that we have in the space. And like I said, we want it to be nimble and quick and keep it simple. We introduced one more light to the mix and that is the Amaran F22C you see over there. We did take our key light, which was the Amaran T2C previously and we made it a hair light and we just kind of boomed it over and we just adjusted it in to give us the best possible look for each shot that we were going for. And there's the F22C. We actually had to think triple diffuse it. We used two of the thicker diffusions, two and a half stops, and then one of the 
thinner diffusions just to get the intensity down. We still have the T4C, which we're using to bring up room levels. It's bouncing into the wall, it's softening up, and it's spreading evenly across the space to help reduce any chances of harsh shadows from the direction of the light. And that just kind of brings everything up in the frame, giving us a beautiful look. Now that the framing isn't as tight, we're able to bring in that F22C close to the subject. We're motivating that practical you see back there on the wall to give us a nice look. And then we just fine tune it to give us just the right amount of wrap that we want, just the right amount of softness. And again, we had to layer up the diffusion to bring the intensity down because we're working at such low levels in this space so we can make it feel natural with those practicals in the background. So all the lighting is dialed in. I guess that's all you need. No, you need to make sure that the camera's on point. But most importantly, for something like this, you need talent to perform. You need them to do an amazing job. And Kelsey, she knocked it out of the park. When we hit record on the camera, the emotion came out and it showed through so well and it translated so well on camera. And you can see in this screen grab, we even have a little tear coming from her eye. You could tell it's emotional. And here's how all the lighting landed on the subject and the background with a false color light applied. The next shot was a close up. We had to adjust the lighting just slightly. What did I do? I grabbed a stand and I put an aperture MC on it with a diffusion to create a catch light on the subject. We had to keep the levels low so it wouldn't affect the look overall and the spread of light, but this is what it looks like up close. And you can see that catch light, it draws your attention straight to the eyes to see the emotion and it was just the right amount to give us some beautiful light and here's how it looks with the false color light applied to the footage so you could see the levels on the subject and the background for the next setup we took the f22c and we turned it away from the subject slightly feathering it onto the talent and what that does is where it starts to fall off, you kind of get a gradient and it has a little less intensity and it's not so harsh and directional. And that gave us the ability to get a beautiful look. We still have the Amaran T2C with grid coming in from behind, but we did eliminate the T4C you see there because we were getting too much spill in the background and the levels were too high. So we cut that down and this is what it all looked like when it comes together. Let's look at the, f the emotion in this frame is intense. The lighting is beautiful. We're getting a catch light from that T2C. Here's what it looks like with false color applied. Outside of the practicals, there was only four lights used. The Amaran F22C, the T2C, T4C, and then an Aperture MC light. Very simple, compact lighting, but it's so versatile. And actually in these scenes, they were way overpowered. We had to take them down a bit, which is crazy to think about, but that just shows what you can do when you control the lighting in a space. Thanks so much for sticking around to the end. I wanna know your feedback. What would you have done differently with a lighting camera? Do you think our actress Kelsey did a good job conveying emotion? Let me know in the comments below. I want to give a big shout out to Aaron with Forte Film Studio for having me out on this shoot. I really appreciate it. And thanks to every single one of you that likes, comments, and subscribes to the channel. It helps me grow and it helps me stay motivated to get more great content out like this. Thank you so much and I'll see you on the next one. If you enjoy this content, check out some of these other videos right here or here. Thanks so much for watching.